Let's have a quick look at it and a bird's eye view of the whole concept. Now how it all started, what was the whole story behind it, there are various stories and various schools of thought about it. But the most famous story I'll share with you. Now let's look into some of the rules and regulations of ancient olympics. And for a long period of time, for long centuries, nobody used to talk about olympics. It was just an event in the history. Now here is the place where things get quite better. on behalf of prep school by vidyashram in today's class we will cover your second chapter that is olympic moments in sports now this chapter will be a tri series session in each session we will cover certain topics from the chapter now what all topics we will be covering in this session let's have a quick look at it first we'll start off with ancient and modern olympics and we'll study about summer and winter olympics also later after that we'll look into olympic symbols ideals objectives and its values after that finally we'll conclude the chapter with the international olympic committee that is again abbreviated as ioc okay so these are all the topics that we are going to study so let's start off with our first topic that is ancient olympics now ancient olympics let's have a quick look at it and a bird's eye view of the whole concept now when somebody asks you about olympics now when it started the sudden date the sudden place that comes to your mind is 1896 athens olympics now that's not the truth the olympics started way back in greece in the village of olympia in again 776 bce now how it all started what was the whole story behind it there are various stories and various schools of thought about it but the most famous story i'll share with you so basically when the god of greece that is zeus got angry he split the land of village of olympia into two different parts so the citizens over there the villagers over there to please the god made a magnificent temple at the valley or the olympic village to again please him and the son of zeus hercules started certain games and sports at that time used to be called as normal games and sports it was not particularly given the name olympics until later and it became a certain tradition so that was the starting of olympics back in the days and that was the real story and real beginning of olympics later it was stopped and what we could see today is the olympics that was inspired from that olympics which again who started it we will get to know again when we study about the modern olympics and its introduction and birth's eye view now let's move on to our next topic that is the ancient olympics and its regulations So now you got an idea about how the ancient olympics started now let's look into some of the rules and regulations of ancient olympics so what were the rules and regulations first the competitor must be only greek completely from a hellenic race and must be physically fit that was the first rule that they had back in ancient olympics the second rule was savages and punished persons were not allowed to participate in these games so all the prisoners back in those times that was a time of kings and conquerors at that period of time whomever were the prisoners and people who were the savages were not allowed to participate in the game point number 3 the rule number 3 the competitors had to stay in the village of olympia for one month before the beginning of olympic games they had to take an oath that had already taken the training in their own respective states for about 10 months so basically before the event one month they have to be in the village of olympia but before that also they should also take an oath that they have taken the training 10 months in their particular respective villages before they come to the village of olympia now the next rule that we have was women were not allowed to participate in the games or see them now you may think that that's one crazy thing about that but back in the days all these kind of crazy stuffs and weird stuffs did exist 
So that's a part of the history. Okay. Moving on to the next, only amateur sports persons could participate in this games, not professionals. Professionals were not supposed to participate in the games because again, it's a common thing that they have. Uh, the logic behind that was again, if professionals used to participate, anyway they will be professional and perfect in that. There will be no competition. So they wanted the amateur to again participate, fail, again try their best and come up. Okay, basically the people who are on the top in that particular game, the professionals of that games were not supposed to participate in the game, only the amateurs were allowed to participate in the game. These are some of the, you know, rules that they had. Some of them felt quite okay, depending on what period we are talking about. And some of them were quite crazy. All of them is from the history. So we don't have to keep that in the mind. Let's move on to our next topic. That is again, modern Olympics. Now here is a place where things gets quite better, right? Now you may think that ancient Olympics started back in 776 BCE and it started from there and it continued till here. No, that's not the truth. After the Greece event, after the Greece moment, whatever happened back in Greece and the village of Olympia during the time of Hercules and Zeus, Whatever happened that stopped there and for a long period of time, for long centuries, nobody used to talk about Olympics. It was just an event in the history. It didn't carry out. But later, it started in Greece, the Athens that you know, which is the first modern official Olympics that you know. Right? So how did all start it? Did it also start automatically? In somebody just thought about it? Yes, somebody did think about it. Who is that? His name is Pierre de Coubertin. What is his name? His name is Pierre de Coubertin. I will write his name. I'll spell it out. It's Pierre de Coubertin. Okay? His name is Pierre de Coubertin. You will see the name in other part of the series also. He joined Scenic Academy and he participated in various military events. But later in his high school, college times, he got a love towards politics and he started studying uh, politics seriously and he took a major in politics. After he studied politics, he came to know different problems that is existing in the national and international relationships. So he started thinking about how we can resolve these problems. So that's when Cobertin thought about Olympic Games. He thought if we could conduct an event where all the countries are participating together, sharing love and the loves towards sportsmanship, the inter-country relationship will develop. That will lead to a more peaceful country and a more peaceful world. Now, did he start thinking about in 1896? No, he didn't start thinking about this. He started thinking about this way before that. He started thinking about it 10 years before it could actually happen. So basically, the work behind the Olympics is way major. And when the discussion came, a lot of countries got involved but not the number of countries that we know. When we talk about the number of countries which take part in Olympics, at this point of time, it will be huge in number. But back in the days, that was not the case. In the first Olympics, can you guess how many countries took part? I'll give you a second. Can you guess how many countries took part in the first Olympics? Only nine countries took part. Now that is a very small number compared to the number of countries that are taking part in the modern day Olympics. Okay, so you can see how much of improvement has taken over and when in the starting no countries were you know for the motion for such a motion but everybody were against it very few countries only nine number of countries came for such a kind of cause and rest of the countries again objected that but later all the countries joined and now majority of the countries are participating in Olympics and Olympics has become one of the major tournaments in the world. Okay, so that is a basic idea of modern Olympics. Now let's look into the motto, Olympic motto. What does Olympic motto says? The Olympic motto consists of three Latin words. What are those? We have CTS, Altius and Fortius. CTS, Altius and Fortius. Those are what words? Those are Latin words. Its meaning is faster, higher and stronger. What is it? Faster, higher and stronger. What is it? Again, I'll repeat. Faster, higher and stronger. Don't forget the three Latin words. Cities, Altius and Fortius. Cities means faster. Altius means higher. And Fortius means strong. The English word fought. Right? What is fought? 
back in the days when the kings used to build their empire they used to build fort fortification what is fortification to strengthen so fortius is stronger fortius the word meaning of fortius is stronger so that is the olympic motto the motto was coined by french educator father didon remember this when we talk about history what is important dates and names we have to keep in mind the dates and names about whatever history we are talking about here so today we came across two words what all are those two names sorry today we came across two names important names who all are those pierre de coubertin who initiated the modern day olympics and here is a person olympic uh, here is a person named father didon who initiated or coined the term olympic motto in which year 1895 Got it. So, 1896, the first Olympics took place. One year before 1895, Father Didon coined the Olympic motto, which is the three Latin words we have: Citius, Altius, and Fortius. Hope I went in depth and made you understood about the Olympic motto. So now let's look into Olympic flag and how it all came together, and what all are the elements, and how it all started. So first, starting off, when it was created, it was created in 1930 by the suggestion of Baron de Coubertin. It was created in 1913 by the suggestion of whom? Baron de Coubertin. Now, this name again, I gave you this name earlier. He is the person who initiated the modern day Olympics, and he is also the person who gave the suggestion for Olympic flag. His name is again Baron de Coubertin. He can be also called as Pierre de Coubertin. Both names are there. You can choose any one name because he is known by both the names. Now, you may have written. Some of you may have written the spelling of his name, and some of them wouldn't have written the spelling of their name because my handwriting was. very good back in that slide so those guys please write it down from here and one more thing i'll tell you when you are sitting to study any history topics in this class also in this session also though we are studying over studying physical education this chapter includes a lot of historical moments dates and names which are significant fix significant for your again concepts and chapter and for your exam so please write down the dates that i'm giving this is the third that date third year we are studying okay 1913 next it was inaugurated in paris in the year 1914 so now you have again the fourth date that is what 1914 so you have again total four so i i, I hope you are writing all those dates and names down and what all event happened on that particular date make a list of that and study it separately when you're studying about this chapter next the flag is made of white silk and contains five interlocking rings okay it contains five interlocking rings what all are those we have uh, five interlocking rings on the side you can see that see the image of the flag here it is showing sky blue then you have a black then you have again red then you have yellow and then you have green you have five different circles these five different circles uh, represent five different continents and the interlocking of that the interlocking of that represents friendship and cooperation among them so the interlocking of this circle represents the friendship among the five continents now what all are those five continents we have america we have australia we have asia we have africa and we have one more over here that is europe okay what is the what is the fifth continent that is europe so america australia asia africa and europe these circles are representing again the coordination and again friendship among all these continents so now you may think that in the modern day geography when we studied there are seven continents then why only five circles are there that is why you can see when the flag was created when it was created it was created in the year 1913 at that point of time at that year on that year the seven continents did not exist only five continents existed and the two continents that you know now also were a part of these five continents so nobody is left out that's what my whole point is nobody is left out in this flag everybody is covered in the flag it's just that the flag is not updated just to retain the tradition and culture of olympics okay so i hope you understood the idea and meaning of the flag and the significance and about the elements and what represent what each of the elements in the flag represent and what it is made of i'll recap once more it is made of silver it was initiated or created in the year 1913 it was inaugurated in 1914 
in Paris and the idea of the Olympic flag was by the suggestion of Pierre de Coubertin or Baron de Coubertin and again the interlocking circles represent the friendship of five different continents which includes also this, the two extra continents that we know right now and also this was done this whole Olympic idea and the flag was again to represent the Olympic event or the Olympics modern day Olympics that we know now hope you understood in depth about each of the elements of the flag now let's move on to our next topic that is again the Olympic flame what is Olympic flame what is the whole idea behind it you might have seen this in the live telecast or TV telecast of Olympics about the Olympic flame the first one is symbol of knowledge, life and happiness. What it is? Olympic flame is the symbol of life, knowledge and happiness. Olympic flame is the symbol of knowledge, life and happiness. Next, it also symbolizes peace. So basically, there are four things that it symbolizes. What all are those? It is knowledge, life, happiness and peace. Next, this flame of torch is lighted from the Olympic village of Greece and it is carried by the runners to the place where the Olympic Games are going to be organized. So basically where it all started, it all started in Greece in the village of Olympia, right? If you remember the story, to retain the culture, to retain the heritage, to retain the tradition, they carry the torch, they light the torch at the village of Olympia and then they carry the torch from there to the place where actually in every period of Olympics where the event actually takes place. What is it again? I'll repeat it once again. The Olympic flame is lit from the village of Olympia and is carried to the place where Olympics is being conducted. Okay, so that's again one culture that they have with the Olympic flame. Next, during the closing ceremony of Olympics, the flame is extinguished. So basically, during the whole period of Olympics, when the Olympics is taking place, during the whole period, they make sure that it's lit throughout the time. And when the closing ceremony of Olympics takes place, the flame is finally extinguished. I hope you understood the different elements and different meaning behind Olympic flame and what is the symbol does it hold, what significant does it hold. Let's move on to our next topic that is again the Olympic awards. Now just like every tournament in Olympics also the awards are divided into three different categories. For the person who comes first he is awarded with gold medal, who comes second he is awarded with silver medal, who comes third he is awarded with again bronze medal. So we have three medals over here gold, silver and bronze and to certify those medals certifications are given for that. So these were Olympic awards that we get in the modern day Olympics. Now let's move on to our next topic that is rules and regulations for modern day Olympics. The modern day Olympics the basic rules are all males and females can participate in Olympics even if they are professionals. Now I have mentioned even if they are professional. Why? Because if you remember in ancient Olympics that was not the case. In ancient Olympics only amateur were allowed to participate in the Olympics. That's why in this session, in this particular category of rules and regulations of modern day Olympics, I have mentioned particularly that all can participate in the Olympic Games even if they are amateur or even if they are professional sportsmen. Now second thing is that the sportsmen should be sent from National Olympic Committee. Just like we studied about, just like we will study about International Olympic Committee, there is National Olympic Committee also which we call it as again NOC. NOC is there in every country. Okay. NOC is a common name given to every country has their own body of Olympic body okay India has what IOC we have Indian Olympic Association IOA we have sorry IOA we have that is Indian Olympic Association at international level we have International Olympic Committee just like that just like we have Indian Olympic Association every other country have their own particular body from where from where sportsmen are again recommended towards International Olympic Committee. Got it? Is, it, is that clear? So, so that's again the second rule. People cannot just directly walk into Olympics and give their name and start participating in that. You have to first get selected and your name uh, gets through Indian Olympic Association. I'm talking about our country. Every country has their own body. So in our country, the case is that you have to again represent your state. You, are, you have to pass through different levels. And finally, you have to 
pass through Indian Olympic Association. If they recommend your name to Olympics, then only you will be representing our country at the Olympic level. That's the second rule. Moving on to the third rule that we have, no sports person can participate in these games without the approval as well as recommendation of National Olympic Committee. Is the same thing that I explained. What is it? Without their recommendation, without the National Olympic Association's recommendation, you cannot participate or you cannot take part in any kind of Olympic event. In our country, that body is what? Indian Olympic Association. What is it? IOA, Indian Olympic Association. So I hope you understood everything that we studied today. I hope you understood in depth all the topics that I covered in this session today. We studied about what all things, I'll recap, give a quick recap now. What all things were those? We studied about ancient Olympics, we studied about modern Olympics, we studied about rules and regulations of each of them, we studied about Olympic flag, then we studied about Olympic motto, then we studied about Olympic flame, and finally we studied about rules and regulations of modern day Olympics, okay? So given all that, I hope you understood all the concepts that I taught today. We will cover the further topics in the chapter in the coming more sessions like I said this chapter is divided in three different sessions now in the further coming session we will study about the further topics of the chapter until then this is me Rohit signing out until next time stay tuned goodbye